Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel where we ask the question, what's that all about? So this is a bonus half episode um, before the full episode on Thursday. Just thought you'd be interested in something I came across that I found pretty fascinating. And anything I find fascinating, I'm probably going to try and share it with you because it's just fun. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at a village in Scotland by the name of Bonnie Bridge. I'm going to apologize now if I call it Bonnieville because I've had Bonnieville on my brain. I'm researching something that is a top secret facility in Utah that I will get to in another episode. But if I flub it, I will try to just go on because I've already restarted like a dozen times <laughs> trying to get the name right. So Bonnie Bridge is a village in Scotland with about 7,000 people. Actually, when I looked this morning, the numbers had changed to about 5,500. So, you know, give or take, between 5,000 and 7,000 people. And you'd never know it, but they have this very unique distinction. They are said to have the most UFO sightings in the entire world, claiming to have more than 300 a year and counting. Uh, it's also part of something called the Falkirk Triangle, which is about 20 miles all, all inclusive. And it's between Bonnie Bridge, Falkirk, and Sterling. So to be transparent about these sightings, it's probably important to note that 95% of them most likely could be explained by, um, you know, balloons, birds, debris in the atmosphere. Um, of that 5% remaining, you've probably got 3%, 2 to 3% go to black budget technology that's out there now because there's a lot of it. Um, another percent or two could go to... Um, you know, atmospheric phenomenon like ball lightning, that's pretty common. Well, it's not common, but it, it's mistaken quite often for UFO sightings. And then, you know, you have whatever's remaining as legitimate sightings. So the first one I read about um, occurred in 1992. A, a gentleman by the name of um, James Walker, he was a local businessman and was driving between Falkirk and uh, Bonnie Bridge, which put him smack in the middle of this triangle and he spotted a shining star shaped object and it hovered over the middle of the road and essentially stopping him in his tracks because he couldn't get back he couldn't get past it without probably running right into it the way he described it um, so he waited for it to move and he recalled that the object flew away at an incredible speed now, after this event happened, he knew he had to tell somebody, and who else could he trust more than his friend and chancellor of the town of Bonnie Bridge, a, uh, William, goes by Billy, Buchanan. Now, when Billy, I'm going to refer to him as Billy, because that's what he asked to be referred to in the um, interview I saw, he decided that, you know, it was a very important event, and he was curious if other people in the town or in the surrounding towns had also seen something and just hadn't reported it. So he went to the local newspaper and um, had it published. And once it was published, to his amazement and to Mr. Walker's amazement, people came out of the woodwork with sightings. They were like, thought I was crazy. I didn't want to come forward. Now, keep in mind, this is the 90s. So, I mean, Yes, it was popular, but perhaps still had a lot of stigmatism to it, you know, which actually still has today. But um, yeah, so people started coming out and um, they even had reportings of UFOs that were howling. I've never heard of a UFO that, that made noise like a howling before. I'm, I'm wondering if that could have been wind related. I mean, I, from... My memory of any research I've done in the past, Scotland just strikes me in some places a lot of wind. I don't know why, <laughs> but I could be making that up. Uh, but they also talked about um, a cigar-shaped craft that actually landed on a golf course. Now, when I saw this, it struck me as odd because you never, it, very rarely, if ever, do you hear of actual seeing a landing of a um, UFO. It's just very strange. Um, but I mean, hey, who am I, right? There's a first or whatever time for it. But now the, Billy, 
he, he takes what his town tells him very seriously. Um, and in October of 1997, he approached the prime minister in London, who at the time was Tony Blair, and told him about the sightings and the amount of them. And he requested that an investigation, you know, be conducted so they could figure out what was going on. Now, enter Nick Pope. Now, Nick Pope, I actually mentioned him in my UFO book that I held up last week shamelessly, and now I'm just going to plug it one more time. It's called UFOs, Bringing History Back to See the Path Forward. Check it out. No, <laughs> but Nick Pope is in that. Um, now, Nick Pope's early career at, was at the Defense uh, min Ministry, where he was essentially a debunker. So he went out to the town and determined that, you know, there was nothing, nothing was dangerous and there was no issues as far as um, security goes for the country or for the people or any any kind of danger. So, um, you know, you'd think, okay, case closed and let's move on, right? Well, you no. Billy, <laughs> who is, um, he's always been known to be a champion uh, for the causes that are important to his townspeople. And I, I find that endearing because he's basically known as the local politician for them and how many politicians do you know that really go to the mat, especially on something like this, where the ridicule level must be so much higher and under such a microscope? Um, you know, he he never faltered or wavered his commitment to trying to figure out what was going on. So he sought out a um, seminar that was going to be taking place where he could get um, basically I equate it to like, a, um, maybe like an alien con or some con where people go and, and talk and, you know, do their presentations and whatnot uh, about their experiences or their research. So two weeks before he planned to go there, um, to present all about all the sightings that his townspeople were seeing, he got a phone call from a woman and, um, she was in America and her name was Phyllis. Shlema. I love saying that name. Um, and she told Billy that she wanted to come over and explain to the people of um, Bonnie Bridge why they were seeing what they were seeing. So when she showed up, this was prior to the, to the, uh, to the seminar. So when she showed up, she wasn't alone. She had brought someone with her by the name of Harmony. Now, as Billy described her, she had long hair. It was a she apparently. She had long hair and large, dark, like slanted eyes. But what really got his attention was when she um, presented her hand to him. And <laughs> it took him aback because he claims that when he saw her hands or hand or whatever, if it was both, I don't know, but um, he said it looked like a crocodile. And um, he knew in that moment, at that very moment, that um, he believed her to be a reptilian. Now, he also said that he, and I quote, I think are part of the aliens we have here on Earth. And he's not wrong. Um, that's been proven time and time again. Even Nick Pope, <laughs> early in his career being a debunker, knows for a fact, and he totes it in his seminars, that there's like, I, it, it could be seven, it could be 12. There's a whole bunch of different species of aliens that are on um, our planet with us now and have been for millions of years. Um, and so everyone's kind of at, the, at that same conclusion now. But after the seminar took place, um, it's of note to know that Harmony did not speak. She didn't have any participation in it other than to just be there and show herself. She wanted people to see that she existed. And so Billy approached her and let her know that after their seminar and after the talk and then meeting her and seeing her, there was not one person left that would ever question whether she was reptilian or not. It, it was believed by everybody. Billy still stands by that today. And, you know, even though during this time, Billy and his family were receiving you know, so much ridicule through the, the local media, the national media, and he never wavered. He never um, backed down. He never questioned. He, he never questioned the sincerity or credibility of anybody in his village, um, just knowing them as people. He took the time to know his people. That's the big difference. Um, but if you fast forward to today, 
you know, nobody's laughing at them anymore. Nobody's ridiculing them anymore because um, look at all the recent UFO sightings that have gone worldwide. Um, even released by the government. I mean, there's just no questioning it anymore. Really, the only question is, when is the interaction going to start, right? I mean, and who knows when we'll be ready for that. I doubt, seriously, I'll still be around for it, but gosh, I would love to. <laughs> um, but, you know, Bonnie, um, Bonnie Bridge, Scotland, you know, it, it remains steadfast as the UFO capital, UFO site and capital of the world. It's a pretty great distinction for, you know, a little village. And the great thing about them is it's not, their town doesn't have like a tchotchke shop. So if you're a tourist and you want to go there and experience your own sighting, perfectly fine by the people. They could, you know, great for tourism. You're not going to find t-shirts. You're not going to find, you may find it online um, by somebody, an entrepreneur or something looking to make a buck, but the town itself, there's no, like if you went into Roswell, New Mexico, let me tell you something. There are, there's a museum. There's, um, you know, shops where you can buy all sorts of, of um, you know, paraphernalia for, you know, Roswell Area 51 and all that stuff. But um, I don't know. It's just, it's very interesting. And I just couldn't, I couldn't walk by this story and go, okay, well, I'm not really researching it. I didn't care. It stopped me dead in my tracks because I don't know. It, it's, it's fascinating, you know, this little hidden gem out there in Scotland, and they have this enormous title to them and distinction. And I thought, wow, I think everybody would like to know that. But, uh, you know, it just, it leaves you with the question, right? What's that all about? You know, why them? And when Billy's asked, because he's asked a lot now, um, why do you think, you know, Bonnie Bridge has been kind of selected um, or chosen, I guess is a better word, for all these sightings. And his his response is is funny, a little confusing to me, but he always says, they ask me why Body Bridge? Well, I say, why Bethlehem? I'm not really sure what that means. I'm not religious, but, uh, you know, if you are and you know what he means by that, let me know. You can leave a comment. And, um, you know, maybe that triangle that they have there is maybe a portal to another dimension. You never know. Not for me to say. I'd love to know what you think. But um, yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. And I'll see you Thursday anyway. So we got that going for us. And until then, I hope you're staying happy and healthy. Stay weird. <laughs> and take care. Thanks.